uh, thanks for attending uh, the last uh, presentation of MicroApps uh, 2014. Um, and this uh, first slide, the title slide, uh, shows that uh, uh, most of you may know uh, that Agilent is splitting into two companies. Uh, the life sciences will retain uh, the name Agilent and uh, electronic measurements uh, part of Agilent uh, will become Keysight Technologies. Uh, ESOF uh, will become is part of, of uh, the of will be part of Keysight uh, Technologies uh, um, soon. Um, uh, this uh, brief presentation uh, is about uh, an exciting new addition uh, to ADS uh, in the area of uh, uh, X parameters, specifically uh, the enhancements uh, relating to um, uh, accounting for memory effects. Uh, I will not go through this slide. Uh, this is uh, a slide is uh, in this <laughs> in the, on the CD-ROM, uh, and it's an abstract, pretty detailed, pretty good abstract of uh, uh, of uh, uh, this presentation. Um, I will briefly talk about technical background, about uh, uh, what's the difference between stati static uh, X parameter measurements and dynamic X parameter measurements, uh, what is needed for the memory effects. Um, and uh, a little bit about the input uh, file format uh, uh, and what the data is uh, to be uh, captured. Um, and finally, uh, not one example, but two examples, but fairly quickly through. We'll try to go through them very quickly. Um, so as uh, most of you know, X parameters uh, is an extension uh, of the uh, well-known S parameters. And that is for, the, for going from the linear uh, circuits to nonlinear characterization and uh, modeling. Um, the uh, static X parameters that are currently available uh, uh, describe circuit behavior under steady state uh, operation conditions. Um, and in that sense, uh, they do account for, uh, for memory effects. For instance, the uh, intermodulation products may have asymmetry. Uh, so that's, that's available. However, uh, under modulated signals, uh, when the uh, envelope uh, varies, uh, then uh, the static X parameters may not be accurate enough, may or may not. So that really depends on the particular uh, uh, DUT that the X parameters uh, uh, to, uh, represent. Um, uh, so, in other words, this is really important what this talk uh, is re really re relevant to, uh, to the modulated signals, uh, CDMA, LT, LT advanced, etc. Uh, so, let's move to, <coughs> uh, to the memory effects. And uh, they have been uh, formally introduced uh, at IMS uh, 2009. Uh, and uh, further uh, enhancements were proposed at AMS uh, uh, 2012, uh, two years ago. Um, and I would like to point you to uh, uh, this book, uh, uh, very recently published, really uh, excellent uh, comprehensive uh, uh, material uh, about X parameters, uh, including memory effects. So what is the mathematical formulation of the model that uh, will account for memory effects? that's shown here. Uh, first of all, this part is the uh, static X parameter, as you know. Uh, the, this, what we have under the integral, this term uh, uh, represents the memory correction. And uh, if we know the kernel K, uh, then we will be able to evaluate that term, uh, uh, taking the history into account. Uh, so that formulation is uh, somewhat similar to reference two, uh, but it is also a little bit uh, different. Um, so let's go now to these uh, measurements. Uh, uh, to characterize static X parameters, uh, the uh, DUT is excited uh, at, let's say, an input port uh, uh, with uh, CW uh, signals, um, and it may be, it should be excited under many power levels uh, to be able to account uh, for uh, uh, various nonlinearities on the way. Um, and what is measured uh, are the reflected or scattered waves at all ports and all is, uh, uh, harmonics or spectral uh, components. Um, so for the uh, memory effects, 
and history to take it, take it into account. We need some transient information. And that transient information uh, can be captured with what we uh, um, phrase as large signal step response. Uh, so large signal step response uh, is what we have here in response to this one. But this is not a standard step response that you may know from the transient simulation. This is uh, a, a change in the sinusoidal wave amplitude from zero to certain value. And again, as for uh, static X parameters, we need to capture uh, d different levels of the, of the magnitude. So in other words, we have to capture a number of such step, uh, uh, step functions. What is really important is that large signal step response measurements are really sufficient uh, for the kernel identification. So that, that enables to build the model and, and, and uh, do the simulations. Um, so the data that is captured uh, uh, in the, uh, on the last slide uh, is put into a generic MD file format uh, with a new block name, X parameter step data. Uh, and it has very similar or almost identical uh, uh, input uh, independent variables. You may stay. You may stay. We'll continue. No problem. Yeah, you, you may stay. No problem. Um, OK, so uh, what, is, what is new in this is the, uh, that the innermost uh, independent variable is time. So for each time point, the data is, is calculated. And also, we don't need actually all the uh, um, X parameters. Uh, uh, particularly, we don't need any small signal X parameters. We only use the, uh, a subset of large uh, signal S parameters. Uh, for that, and that is sufficient. Um, so uh, now the model uh, implementation consists of basically two phases. One is model identification, and the second is model evaluation. Um, in model uh, identification, first we get we have to identify the kernel from the measurement data. Uh, then we do orthogonal decomposition of the kernel uh, and uh, identify the filtering uh, characteristics. Um, in model, during the model evaluation, uh, the nonlinear controlled uh, sources are evaluated. Uh, uh, they o operate on in the static sense, uh, and the, the filtering uh, with convolution uh, provides the uh, uh, handling of the history. So. Let's move to the uh, first example. The first example shows uh, um, ACPR measurement on an amplifier. A CDMA signal is passed through a, an amplifier. And uh, the blue uh, spectrum shows uh, uh, the response of, uh, of the model with memory effects, while the red one shows the, uh, uh, the, uh, the model response without the uh, memory model. Uh, so uh, also the ACPR values are shown, and they differ by about uh, 7 uh, dBs here. Uh, uh, and uh, what is important here is that this is the right uh, direction. Uh, so uh, this is ex the expected trend. So the model is really enhanced and, and improved. Um, so the second example, it is not, this slide is not in the, on the CD-ROM. Um, it's uh, very interesting to take a look. Uh, is basically we selected one step uh, measure of uh, the measured data um, and uh, build the model and, uh, and uh, simulate the model under the same conditions. Uh, and we get really, really excellent uh, match uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the step measurement data. Uh, what's interesting is that if we use the static X parameters uh, for this uh, simulation, the blue curve would be basically flat from zero to, to the end. So that's, that's really the difference uh, uh, that the model makes. Uh, and by the way, this is definitely not a table lookup approach. 
so uh, finally, um, I would like to say that uh, the uh, enhanced uh, 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 X-parameter model simulation that takes effect into uh, account the, the uh, uh, memory effects uh, is released uh, in ADS. The ADS 2014-01 contains a sort of beta release um, where the step data is, is uh, additionally uh, handled and, and, uh, and, uh, and used. Um, a new version of the experimental file, for file format is planned and it will be of course backward compatible to what we have now. Um, and finally, there is uh, dependency on hardware that is still to be completed. Uh, basically, the NVMA, NVMA measurement uh, uh, capabilities need to enhance uh, or need to complement uh, uh, the simulation uh, features uh, uh, in NVS. Um, so, thank you very much. And we'll be happy to answer any questions uh, you may have. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>